Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and you're watching SoCal Disney Dad. Today we are in Solvang, California. It is a small little Danish town, Danish village, uh, on the 101 freeway, just about three miles off the freeway. In fact, we were up in Monterey Bay, California, and we were heading back home, and we decided we wanted to stop here and check it out. Uh, it is a really cute, really awesome town, and I'm excited to share it with you guys, so let's get going. entire town looks kind of like this and uh, we're gonna go get some lunch here and breakfast that's it sorry breakfast we're gonna go get breakfast right now isn't this the coolest little architecture Right in here in this corner is Mortensen's Danish Bakery. We're gonna check that out a little bit later today. Uh, also, the Hans Christian Andersen Museum is here in Solvang, so I wanna see if we can find that if we have enough time. Uh, but like I said, right now, we're just gonna be heading straight to breakfast, wherever that is. I'm just walking this direction. Oh look, here's the other side of the Danish Bakery. So you can come in two different directions here, either side. Check that out over there, Hamlet Square. It's like this giant windmill. And oh, I just love this town. Looks, looks like this here is a little visitor center. So we're coming right here to the Solvang restaurant, home of Aunt Arnie's famous Albus Giver. I don't know what Albus Giver is. So it looks like it's about a 15 minute wait for us here the Solvang restaurant. 15 minute wait, it's a little after nine in the morning. They open at eight by the looks of it. So here is the indoor area of the Solvang restaurant. What are you getting, James? James, what are you getting? Pancakes. Pancakes? So here is a look at the menu. This is the item that we're probably all gonna get. And this is that they're famous for. And it's the three Danish style table skiver. It's only $4.40 for three of them. Uh, and you can get it served with ice cream for $7.75. So I think I might do that, but we'll see. All right, so here, well, here is just the, the standard Danish pancakes with raspberry sauce and powdered sugar. This is the Abel skiver here at Solvang restaurant. And then, of course, here is what it looks like with uh, with ice cream. So go ahead, talk about it. Um, I don't know how to describe them. They're round. I mean, you can see I still have one left. Where it's James here. He's like, Mommy, why are you so slow? Because apparently he's devouring them. Um, but yeah, it's like a round, fluffy. Pancake thing, powdered sugar. Mommy, you're in the way. <laughs> yeah, he's saying I'm losing the race. <laughs> I'm slow. But, um, yeah, I'm really liking the way. So, I'm glad we came. And, um, my only thing is I wish it had a little bit more powdered sugar on top, but otherwise it was really good. You had ice cream on there, so I'll be yours. The, um, the ice cream was really, really good with it. It was uh, a nice mix of hot and cold. The, actually just eating the ice cream with like the raspberry sauce was really, really good. Like, I'd almost consider getting raspberry sauce just to put on vanilla ice cream um, at home. That, that was a really, really great idea. Um, and yeah, I thought it was a, a great flavoring overall. Of course, I don't like melted ice cream, so I had to eat it really quickly because I didn't want the ice cream to melt. I didn't really film or talk about any of that thoughts during it, but I um, wasn't quite sure how I would like it at first. I, cause I like regular pancakes, but I'm not a huge pancake person in general. Like when I like my pancakes, I like chocolate sprouted on top. <laughs> uh, and the chocolate is really what makes pancakes tolerable to me. But um, the raspberry sauce and the ice cream, and the powdered sugar too, of course, uh, just mixed in with that uh, made it really, really great. And the texture was different than your typical ice cream. Oh, did I say ice cream? Yeah, different texture than a regular pancake. Regular pancake um, has like a, um, 
I don't even know what you call it. I can't even really explain the, the texture, but um, the, these balls are more like a pastry than they were a pancake. So it tasted really good in my opinion. So then over there at uh, Solvang Restaurant, you can wait to dine in. We did. It was about a, well, they said it was a 15 minute wait. It was more like a 20 to 25 minute wait. Um, but once we got in there, uh, they had you know, really great indoor seating and cute little area, that sort of thing. But if you want to, they have these tables that are out here and they don't seat people out here and serve them. You can order to go and then you can take your to-go container and you can just eat it right here. So it would have been a lot faster for us to have done that because that takes maybe, you know, 10 to 15 minutes for them to make the food. But when you're waiting for, you know, as long as, as we had uh, and just to get inside and then you have to wait to get served on the inside, um, it definitely would have been faster out here, but it was worth the wait. The food was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, of course, over here, they've got the Belgian cafe has a very similar situation here. And this whole road is actually blocked off. You can't drive down here. Uh, and so the, they have, you know, a bunch of seating out here, the Danish Hill Bakery and Coffee Shop over there. Danish Mill, sorry, Danish Mill Bakery and Coffee Shop over there has, again, a similar situation. But right over here we have, and I'm probably gonna butcher this, Ingeborg's, Ingeborg's Danish Chocolates. And we wanna go in here and check this out uh, because we love chocolate and this looks, it's just like a cute little store. So we wanna check that out. So let's go in here and check out what they have in here. Ooh, look, ice cream. Ice cream, you just like ice cream. I know. Oh, I homemade ice cream sandwiches. Ice cream! No, you're not getting ice cream. Daddy, have ice cream. Daddy, have ice cream. Daddy, look, chocolate alphabet. Chocolate covered baklava. Marzipan walnut. Ooh, I like marzipan. Oh, like, no, but there's a. Ooh, I might have to get that because that's one of my favorite things from C's. Ooh, amaretto. I don't know what amaretto is. It looks like almond paste. Oh, it orange peel looks like orange. Oh, look, chocolate covered pineapple. I want this. Honey? Yeah. Chocolate covered orange, chocolate covered apricot. I want I want some sugar free mint truffle. I know, but I'd rather just have a regular mint truffle. So here is a really cool looking painting and it's all of Solvang. And you can see right there is the chocolate shop. And then right across the road is Solvang restaurant, which is where we just were. So that's really neat. Amy says you can get a puzzle of this in the toy shop, which is right next to the restaurant as well. All right, so here's what we got. We have one bar of marzipan, one chocolate covered pretzel, and one mint truffle. So the boys are having that. They're gonna break it in two. And they're gonna split it. Maybe. There we go. Wow, Yay. that's a thick pretzel. Yay. And I got it exactly I got a big E. All right. I got a big nine and a big E. Uh-huh. All right, take a bite and tell me what you think, James. Yum, yum, <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> All right, pick one. She's going for the marzipan. Of course. Break that in half. And there's mine. Mm. Gooder, gooder. Better or um, the same as C's? Better. Better than Better. C's. It's more marzipan. All right. Just All right, like my turn. If I have one thought, it's that C's comes in dark chocolate with marzipan. I think I prefer the dark chocolate, but the marzipan flavor is definitely better here. Not with marzipan. No, that was the amaretto. It was the amaretto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Now it's time for the mint truffle, which is gonna be very hard to split, but I'm gonna try to take just half a bite. Mm. That's pretty good. Amy doesn't like it as much. No. I mean, I don't not like it. I don't know. It's 
still has that twinge of toothpastey taste <laughs> compared to some mint and stuff. Looks like there's candles across the road, a shirt ah. gallery, and then check this out right here, the cute, really awesome windmill. I can't believe it. Even in Solving, we're nowhere near a theme park and my kids find a penny machine. But it's a tourist town. It's still, it's a penny machine. Cabrillo has a penny machine. I suppose that that's a national park. The horse and the kids are switched. I want this one. What one? You want the windmill? Yeah. I like the, um, the Viking ship. Viking one, you want that one? Yeah. Okay, hold on. This is right here, free ice cream tasting. I'm assuming that's like on a little <laughs> sample spoon. Um, but it's not open at the moment. James wanted me to film the bunny baking. And that's right out here outside the Solvang Bakery. Look, it's the U.S. Post Office. This is probably the most unique looking post office I have ever seen. Because usually they're always the normal blue looking building. So back here in this little nook, we found this sign and it talks about this tower right here. And while you're looking at it, I'll tell you what it says. It says this tower was completed in May, 1991. It is a replica, approximately one third the size of the round tower in Copenhagen, Denmark. A Runde Tauren was built on the initiative of King Christian IV uh, in 1588 through 1648 with Hans Steen Steinwinkel, the architect. On 7 July 1637, the foundation stone was laid uppermost on the facade of the tower, where is an inscription, a rebus. The rebus can be interpreted in the following way. Lead God, the right teaching, and justice into the heart of the crowned king, Christian IV, 1642. In 1642, the tower was completed. Rundetarn is the oldest functioning observatory in Europe. So that's pretty neat. Look, it's G. Willikers. <laughs> There's so many places to eat here. We've passed by tons of cafes, bakeries, restaurants. There's a, a restaurant back there called the Red Viking. Amy and I want to come up here, I think sometimes just the two of us, leaving the kids behind. Benji, come hold my hand, please. And um, I would really, really like to go to the Red Viking, I think, the next time that we're here. That would be... <laughs> the, the, the kids are holding, both of them are holding my same hand <laughs> and, and Benji is distressed about this <laughs> um oops okay so let go you, of my hand you're yes the I'm flipping around now honestly this doesn't really like this street is blocked off just like the other street is but I don't see nearly as cool of things down this street so I'm not gonna bother going down there although I do see Morton's bankery uh, is a little further down and that's where we're gonna end up. But before we detour down this road, there is this really cool building down here I wanna check out. This building right here is what I wanted to check out. Uh, this says it's the Solvang Fine Art Building, um, but check out the tower and it's got a little clock on the front of it. Looks really, really neat. I don't think it's open. I just like the building. Like, you know, there's, there's nothing even in there. It's completely cleared out. Um, but I do think the building is super, super cool. I mean, check out this even. <laughs> Whoa, that's good. Over across the street here is a cool looking building. There's like a water mill out front. Of course, this looks like it's in disrepair, uh, but it's a very cool old style looking building for sure. Um, and I really like it. And then straight over here off to the left, we have the King Christian Tower Shops. Again, none of these look like they're open, um, but really cool architecture, especially with this, this um, rooftop ornament here. Uh, those kind of look like dogs, but like dog dragon blends. And then uh, they've got this spike that goes all the way up. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm seeing here. Of course, my boys found what they call a shortcut, but all of their shortcuts end up being longer than taking the actual quickest way. 
While they're doing that, it says King Christian Tower. This tower is a miniature replica of one of Copenhagen's most famous landmarks, the Stock Exchange Tower. The entwined tails of the four dragons represent the unity of the four Scandinavian countries. It was the last work designed and handcrafted by Ferdinand Sorensen, father of Solvang's Danish architecture, who died in 1987. So that's what this tower is that uh, we were just, we were just talking about. Your shirt. So, this is the shirt that they wore for today. It's got five. Got it There's five on there. Um, I would say Iceland is probably. No, um, okay, I know Norway. Yeah. Norway and Denmark for sure. I'm not sure. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I looked it up and I was right. It was Iceland that is not included in the original four Scandinavian countries. Uh, that would have been my guess just based on, on looking at those. Um, so the four dragons are representative of Finland, um, Norway, Norway Denmark. Denmark, and Sweden. So those, <laughs> yeah, those four are what's represented there. Okay, well we're about to head out now and we're gonna go into Mortensen's Danish Bakery to grab some snacks for the road. Here I was a look at all the items that they've got inside the bakery here. Got more of the chocolatey type items off to the right here. And then if you come over here, they've got lots and lots of different type of Danishes and uh, those sorts of things. Of course, Danish in Denmark makes total sense, right? I'm looking at that apple turnover though. It looks really, really good. Got a Danish waffle down here and a cinnamon crisp. I don't know. The apple turnover is what I'm eyeing, but I think this right here, the cinnamon roll with raisin, sounds good too. We also have this Danish Kringle. <laughs> and over here we have some, uh, what's something called a butter ring. Here's a look at their prices, just so you can get an idea of what things will cost you. As much as I'd love to sit here and let you see what those things taste like and our opinions of them, there are snacks for the road because we're leaving. Uh, if you want us to come back to Solvang for a more in-depth video, maybe stay at an inn, check that out, that sort of thing, let us know down in the comments. If you've ever been to Solvang, let, that, let us know as well with your best recommendation for a place to go, thing to do, thing to see, that sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, that'd be great. And we'll look forward to it. Well, that is it for our time here in Solvang, California. In fact, we were just leaving and I forgot to do a sign out video. And uh, I'm glad that I waited though, because there were people just circling through the parking lot looking for a spot. It is about 1130-ish uh, on a Sunday. And uh, we got here at just after nine o'clock, maybe nine o'clock on the dot. Uh, and so there were plenty of parking when we got here, but now at 1130, parking is pretty scarce. So we're glad we got here when we did. And I'd recommend you get here early if you're coming to Solvang. Uh, for a visit just for ease of parking situations. But thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos of Southern California theme parks and attractions, uh, road trips, uh, sightseeing, things that you, you want to do in California, uh, mostly Southern California, but we do travel to other places too sometimes, uh, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you again next time. Okay.